Hey guys. Chuck's again. Pulling apart this, what is it, buddy? A, I think it's Auto Sharp. Uh, I think it's about a one kilo, kilovolt inverter. Oh, quick look. One kilovolt, I think it, it says. The original specs said that it, it must be not that efficient because the original specs on this thing reckons it can get 5 to 25 amps out of it and 265 volts open circuit. But, you know, open circuit, closed circuit, loaded circuit. So these are all pretty well designed. The thing's broken. I'm not even going to bother repairing it, but I thought that I might get these caps out and there's a lot of good resistors in this that I hadn't seen in the other ones so I will be pulling that one out and that one out because I 20, 20 watt resistors are handy to have and then I'll start stripping it down to have a look what I can else I can find or use this here is some sort of transformer I'd say I'm pretty sure it's a transformer and it's hooked in through here so um, just having a look at it it's got a heap of relays it's got three different uh, 24 volt DC relays in there they might come in handy for something if you can think of things I could use it that's a pretty good uh, bus bar fuse um, that fuse is probably blown uh, but uh, if you've ever seen one of these or, or would like to comment and tell me what their, what their uses are what you'd use them for after they've been stripped down well look at this that's a good idea isn't it it's sitting inside material and you can probably get them out so that'll be coming out too so let's see what we do anyway it only takes about four screws four nut screws and then four little screws to take it apart because the main screen is there and I think it's got a if I remember rightly uh, on this board that was sitting in here originally, it's got a programming header here and an extender which will come in handy for something, quite a big extender. So yeah, some good parts you can get out of these things and the heat sink on this thing, oh god, you should feel how heavy this is. It's very, very heavy. But there is a lot of aluminium in this thing that, you know, I haven't even thought of using it. And what's that blue part? I'm not 100% sure what the blue part is. Could be a battery, could be anything. Now straight away we've got these out. We had to take that off and those two screws locking that in on either side. So that was a cover for this area here. Not sure why they covered the two troidal cores. But um, yeah, it looks like a filtering system for the actual DC line. So, looks like a bit like a Hartley filter. So I'm having a guess it is a Hartley and we'll keep moving along and pulling things apart and see what we get. And we've got come into this area here where there's a standoff load. I'd say these are loads for when um, it doesn't need power to the grid. But, uh, bring that out, we'll probably come out now. It's some sort of control cable going to the other board. I will take that off in a moment. And yeah, we'll see if we can see anything on the other side of the board. Drop everything down there. It doesn't look like it's, it looks very well done. There's a bit of heat in the centre area. And a bit of flux that they've missed on the board. So I'm having to guess that one of the caps have just gone. And that's probably the only thing that's wrong with this. Whether to go any further and strip it down or whether to wait and maybe um, rebuild it and sell it on. I don't know. Don't know whether it's worth it because I think that the uh, only thing that's worth it in here would be maybe that. And you could probably use this uh, plus voltage and minus voltage sitting there. So it's been modulated probably through this circuit here to get your inversion and these could have gone I'd say these would be FETs uh, there's a couple of resistors or diodes down in there diodes I think and 
yeah, it's well made. Anyway, we'll keep moving along. We'll try and sort this out and take it apart. And I tell you, I just bought a new camera to try and improve my sound quality and hopefully my audio soon. And I can afford that. Uh, it's pretty hard on what I'm, I live on. So, but anyway, we'll keep moving along. Oh, look at this. I just took the cover off. And as I took the cover off, I realized it has a troidal core, a massive troidal core and an inductive load, which I'm not sure how that's working. But hell, that's a lot of copper there. And the lady just gave it to me for free. So yeah, she said, oh, is it worth anything? And I said, oh, I don't know, wouldn't have a clue. But I would say that copper there would be worth a fair bit of money. And that's probably why they charge so much. And there you've got some sort of starter circuit. I'm not sure. It might be the modulation circuit actually for the actual main board. So we'll give it a play and we'll see what happens. I just pulled that transformer out. What I did was I just used wires and leveraged it out. I'm now going to try and get this out. This is going to be the hardest bit, getting that out. That I don't think I'm going to get out for a little while. I think there's one screw down the bottom still left. And this is the heaviest piece of copper I've ever lifted. It it is really heavy. I don't know. I can. It's still weighing as heavy as what the box did originally. I don't think the aluminium or aluminium, as Americans call it, is as heavy as that thing is. So I've lifted that up. It's got all the specs on the side, which we'll have a look at later. And now I'm going to cut this apart and see if I can get into this. Um, I think it's a cap sitting there and I'm not sure why these two wires are hanging around here but uh, they're probably coming off something or maybe they're coming off two of the wires and supplying power to here this board here that, uh, and it's um, made by Mitsubishi Japan so it's quality stuff so I've got to this final bit this inductor or whatever it is could be a relay for all I know I think it's inductor I can't get it out with this, even though I've got it there, so I'm going to have to get a socket set and see if I can get into it. So that's my next problem. It looks like this was sealed and everything, but it uh, looks like something got in here. Anyway, let's keep working on it. Okay, after checking it a little bit and doing a bit more work, I've found that uh, the actual socket is an 8mm. That's an 8mm socket for both sides. And you'll need an extension bar, probably preferable to get down into it, into there to get it out. So we'll do that and should be out in a second. Getting it out, it looks like an elaborate transformer, but it looks one-to-one. -one, so I'm not sure why they're using one-to-one -one on it. Uh, maybe it's used for filtering, I'm not sure. Anyone know about these? Can you please leave a comment down the bottom? Okay, there's a earth brace there for earthing the coil you'll need a 7 mil to get into that because it's not really noticeable until you try to rip the whole thing out and then that's what you need other than that you could use a pair of pointy nose pliers to try and get it out if you feel that is your desire final board there is a b plus and a zero volts of earth there's also a negative voltage and a amps which doesn't seem to be used neither of those two and there are a couple of control controls and that goes down underneath here we're going to try and pull that apart and have a look main board that i just pulled out there are a lot of gold contacts and then it goes on to this board here which is connected to a very big heat sink so i'd say they're big fets we have also on this board a lot of optics opto couplers along here for each one of those chips not sure what the chips are they are a a 4504v so we might have to look them up and have a look what they do so yeah and we've got another one of these things here that not 100 sure what they're doing 
Um, like I said, if anyone knows what they are, they look like they've got a fair bit of a big track on them. So I'm thinking they're some sort of silicon diode or FET, but not 100% sure. And they have two sides to them. One goes to the negative side and the other goes to the voltage side. So not 100% sure whether there's some sort of switching system or what. And we'll try and get that out. Okay, so the module is a IGCT. It's a normal transistor, a power transistor, and it goes from 15 volts to 50 amps apparently, and it's made by Mitsubishi, so it's integrated circuit, but mainly a power transistor. So yeah, pretty cool stuff, and it's fifth generation apparently. So yeah, if you like this video, Please subscribe, please like, and please follow along for other um, interesting things about learning about bits and pieces of electronics. Anyway, that's it from me, and I hope that you guys are having a great day. Catch you on the next one. Bye. If you like this video, please uh, like and subscribe. I could use some extra subscribers. And please keep watching. There's going to be more stuff coming along the way. Uh, did do a TV set, a Samsung, but the only problem was I need the main board and I'm waiting for it.